Four adventurers, Petra, Abby, Kyler, and Hiram, <laughs> and their traveling companion, the grizzled old <laughs> participant, Marty Dodge, set off on a, a, a grand adventure during the uh, month of, uh, well, June and, June and July in 2012. You're all checked in. Uh, <laughs> the usual shenanigans, uh, oh, making the guy. airport on time, getting aboard, making transitions. Uh, the West Coast, uh, uh, from the airplane with the vol volcanic activity, uh, certainly a, an impressive sight for those who haven't seen it. Um, landing in Cordova on the same day, Prince William Sound, the area where I spent four years in the Coast Guard, and the site of uh, 14 previous college-sponsored activities. The very second day of our trip, we started off on a backpacking trip to the Power Creek Cabin, a Forest Service facility, uh, four miles into the wild. <clears throat> we faced snow conditions unlike any in the past 60 or 70 years. One storm dumped 18 feet in Cordova, and we were walking on deep snowpack, uh, which normally would have been spruce upholstered, spruce needle upholstered trails. Uh, having to cut our way through uh, snow banks and deal frequently with the excessive uh, snow melt at that point. Most impressive, uh, the hydropower facility from the Power Creek uh, intake that is uh, several thousand feet uphill. It was prior to this scene that I punched my leg through the snow, uh, twisted uh, my left knee very severely and struggled uh, against the good judgment to continue on. Uh, we got to the Power Creek intake, um, evidently very much uh, if impacted by avalanches that previous winter. Uh, the intake, uh, but the superstructure above that, virtually pretzelized as a consequence of that avalanche activity. Snow everywhere, deep, heavy, uh, very difficult to get around. Avalanches coming off the uh, the mountainside uh, filled the valleys and created uh, serious obstacles for dry passage uh, to our destination. We are doing an emergency evacuation. Emergency evacuation on a beautiful day. I woke up the next morning virtually unable to move. Uh, the knee was uh, swollen up the size of a melon. Um, I called the uh, insurance company and next thing I knew the sheriff, uh, the Forest Service and ultimately the Coast Guard deemed the evacuation to be advisable. This entire scene uh, has been captured on the uh, Coast Guard uh, Alaska Channel on the weather station. I've had several people mention the, the scene uh, to me since. I hobbled away uh, <laughs> with the assistance of, uh, of Kyler at this point and ultimately the Coast Guard person himself. The three, the four of the adventurers stayed up in the cabin for the three full days while I recovered to a significant degree in the a bed and breakfast with ice on my knee and a prolonged rest through the good graces of our my friend uh, Sandy King. Uh, the uh, Coast Guard helicopter was under full power at the entire uh, operation so that it would not sink into the snow. Three days later, uh, the gang returned. I uh, rejoined with them, and we prepared for our next expedition. Um, I uh, very much uh, unable to, to walk, to hike, uh, felt I could uh, ride in the kayak uh, safely enough. Our bed and breakfast facility proved to be a, a very convenient and very comfortable situation. In this particular expedition, we utilized uh, uh, public transportation, the bus service, uh, 
in years past we rented a vehicle, but uh, this turned out to be a much better option for us from a financial point of view. Uh, but there's no red tide reported. Renting the kayaks uh, 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 through the Orca Adventure Facility. Do you have one black one and one white? Launching these into the uh, Prince William Sound, which at this point is uncharacteristically calm. This was the area, uh, the waters I applied when I was in the Coast Guard back in the late 60s. Uh, very, very rarely does one find the flat, calm waters in this particular region. The kayaking is a, a spiritual activity, a human powered. Uh, Initially and consistently, we encountered uh, charismatic wildlife sightings, the, the clattering oyster catcher uh, up close and not too concerned with our presence, marine organisms replete, uh, that rich intertidal zone uh, surrounded by the glaciated mountains of, of Prince William Sound. Uh, uh, what's for dinner? Uh, that, would you think there's any edibility left to that thing? Sea otters have made a wonderful comeback after being nearly exterminated. Uh, unfortunately, they feed upon fish from the cannery and apparently are uh, seriously poisoned as a result. The islands of Prince William Sound, much of which have old growth timber, are idyllic, unspoiled, and beautiful quiet places to be. But not unlike uh, so many other places on planet Earth, uh, here we face invasive alien creatures, in this case the European black slug, uh, a grotesque creature <laughs> the size of a banana, uh, uh, are omnivorous. Uh, they have invaded the town of Cordova and feast upon dog feces and cat food and virtually anything else that has any energy in it. Uh, they're grotesque looking creatures, uh, uh, slow moving and able to produce a bucket of slime if they're, if they're irritated in any serious manner. Camping skills uh, are necessary for the particular expedition that we undertook to complete. Uh, we did our best to provide for ourselves in areas where the impact would be easily obliterated. That uh, camping without a trace was very much our part of our program. Looking east in Prince William Sound, uh, the otters frequently come by. Um, the camping expedition, the camping experience itself is a uh, a time to relax, a time to relate, uh, enjoy uh, a good cup of tea or a cup of coffee, and lots of unfettered uh, con conversation, which to me is uh, one of the real, real joys of group activities of this sort. I've conducted uh, 43 expeditions through the college when I was uh, an active professor. I'm now retired. of two or more weeks, uh, two to five weeks duration. Uh, this was a different group. Uh, friends, uh, I was retired, thus not insured, and I couldn't take any pay for this. Um, but I love Alaska, and the, probably the most significant thing in my existence has been sharing my love uh, with so many students in such beautiful places. Cordova is uh, not accessible by road, supplied largely by, by barge and containerized cargo uh, facilities. Morning, Marty. Morning, Hiram. You think people are going to sleep when you have an opportunity to consort with the finest scenery on all the planet? I told them we've been up for hours. She's laying in my tent. I was actually writing. But... Was the view pretty good? Yeah. <laughs> The period of uh, midsummer, uh, June and July, 
offers the greatest window of good weather opportunity. Rarely do we encounter other recreational groups. Um, this is a remote area, very difficult to get to. Um, and we're very fortunate to be able to enjoy this as we did. Paddling out into Prince William Sound, uh, we encountered winds that uh, were somewhat adverse. Uh, but this particular environment, uh, worth uh, contemplating, serves at one of, as one of the richest uh, salmon fisheries anywhere on the planet, uh, the coast of Alaska, uh, the Bristol Bay around to the west, but here an impressive sane net load of, of pink salmon. Whales are incredibly abundant in Prince William Sound and often we're fortunate enough to get a good look at them. Uh, we brought our kayaks around the uh, east side of North Island in Prince William Sound, a, a strange uh, geologic cut of uh, phenomenal beauty. And again here, the islands, uh, unspoiled, uh, replete with old growth timber, uh, a, a wonderful character and a wonderful ambiance. Paddling out through this narrow canyon and encountering the full sweep of the Chugach Mountains and Chugach National Forest was uh, a wonderful experience. Another day of calm waters. Uh, we're very fortunate uh, to have encountered these. And another day of close encounters with, uh, in this case, sea otters. Uh, the Females and the young uh, gather together in the shallower waters. Uh, there is such a human, uh, personable quality to these things that individual female carries, takes care of her pup for quite a long time. We were prepared and necessarily uh, set up uh, tarps to forestall the rain in our camping expeditions. Back, back to Cordova for a, a day or two before we carried on our expedition. We continued work which we have uh, provided for ready? Mark King um, cuts first. over the years. 45 degrees. Abby had uh, a horrendous desire to cut down a tree with an axe. Mark is indeed clearing a home site. Work your yeah. pattern. Oh, look at that accuracy. Phenomenal. Several of these trees and process, and process them into fuel wood. We're looking at mountain hemlock, which in this case, a uh, good sized tree, extraordinarily dense, very hard very difficult wood to chop, but Abby persisted, an athlete and tough that she is, she managed to get through this tree to the point where we could fell it uh, quite handily. I, of course, uh, had to take a, a turn myself, loving the process of swinging an axe almost as much as I do driving a chainsaw. Widening the scarf, and down she goes. This tree is to be uh, processed into fuel wood. One doesn't think of conifers as being the finest of all fuel wood, but when there's nothing else available, uh, <clears throat> give it a shot. Processing wood with a group of energetic folks is something that uh, is wonderfully satisfying. Uh, Woo! Out of sight. I stayed in, uh, with Mark and Sandy in their, their earlier home in Cordova while my knee was recovering. And here I am still hobbling around, in fact will be for the entire journey. Wow. 
in years past we've produced almost half a year's supply of fuel wood with somewhat larger groups uh, associated with the college travel courses during the Alaska experience. But all of these folks are tuned in to, to hard work and thoroughly enjoy being out of doors oh, and take wonderful advantage of the opportunities that are available. Hit it again! Harder! Harder! There it goes. Yeah! We ranged out uh, uh, with a rental vehicle at this point and explored the Copper River Delta, the, the National Wildlife Refuge, one of the largest contiguous, uh, continuous wetlands on all of the West Coast, an area where literally millions of migratory birds come through on their way to the breeding grounds in the North Slope. This huge river delta is uh, rimmed with the, the Chugach Mountains, uh, five, six, seven thousand feet in height, uh, and and carved uh, by glacial action, snow fields and the high elevations ooze out through the valleys, carving glaciers, uh, carving canyons as they go, which in this case are still filled with ice. We parked our vehicle along mile 21 of the uh, what used to be the railroad to the Kennecott Mine and hiked into the Power Creek Cabin. Uh, four miles of, of level, uh, level land. <laughs> Kyler found a little pixie cup here and realized that it would make uh, quite, a, quite a scene. Um, the spiritual quality of the deep forest in here, much of which was logged a hundred years ago by hand with springboard pockets and springboards cross-cut saws for the purpose of producing railroad ties for the, the Kennecott uh, Railroad that carried the copper ore from Kennecott to Cordova. That's a good echo. The Forest Service cabin, heated with wood, uh, does provide tools and we indeed uh, utilize these to keep ourselves warm and dry in the process. A little expedition the next day into the Copper River Delta, the wildlife areas, the wetlands. Many of the migratory birds have made it on through at this point, but the Duska Canada geese and, and others, a group of uh, Student Conservation Association employees of the Forest Service in, in process working on the Copper River Delta with Forest Service projects. One of my uh, passions has always been trail construction, uh, access to wildlife viewing for sure. Uh, when I was uh, in grad school, I returned to Cordova to build trails and maintain cabins with the Forest Service in near Cordova. This particular trail, built in memory of Pete Dahl, a very active uh, naturalist, uh, represents some of the finest, uh, somewhat more elaborate trail boardwalk assembly than one would normally find. I remain mystified as to how the perpetrators of this trail actually managed to bend <laughs> solid four by fours uh, into the requisite shape. Beauty is where you find it. That's awesome. And more often than not in Cordova, uh, we find <laughs> Double rain. Double documented. Uh, <laughs> rain and the mosquitoes you get used to. Uh, the One of the most incredible vistas, uh, uh, the Child's Glacier next to the uh, million dollar bridge that went to the railroad. Alright. Just saw a big bear. Uh, Woo! He's big and brown. He had some black in the back, though. So I don't know what it was, but that was scary. Woo! Got Marty's camera. Feeling good. The lens is not open. God, my heart is racing, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it off now. There we go. Okay. So he was standing right here. You can see his, uh, his feet prints, footprints, whatever you want to call them. Hey, he seemed like he took off over here. Whew. 
Big and brown, huge ass ears. Not a grizzly bear, but a red squirrel. Hiram ran right smack dab into a great grizzly bear uh, and managed to capture the sound of his excitement and uh, where the bear traveled. A gold mine further in from the McKinley Lake cabin. Still a living museum. Uh, I must grant a Petra, who in addition to other um, activities on this particular expedition, managed to earn four credits of, of uh, Empire State elective presenting to the group uh, the Alaskan Ecosystem Ecology. A very detailed, prolonged, multiple presentations. Petra enriched our journey dramatically over the course of the four weeks we were on site. I did was fortunate to arrange to have Pete Mickelson, a naturalist and author, resident of Cordova, uh, serve as our guide for a day uh, to the Mummy Island uh, out in the Prince William Sound, uh, which indeed served as a burial ground for the Aleut Indians, uh, the burial caves up above high tide line, uh, off limits for uh, pedestrian travel. Uh, the wind scourged, snow savaged, uh, forlorn trees on the islands are again particularly attractive. One feature here. Uh, astounding number of marine uh, mollusks uh, washed up in windrows several feet deep. Now these, it turns out, are harvested in, by the sea otters, dig them up out of the mud and sand and feast on them and they wash ashore. The sea otter population has increased to the point where they're basically in trouble now with food supply. Take a few moments under an overhang, enjoy a respite from the rain, and indeed enjoy our lunch uh, pretty thoroughly. We did gather uh, blue mussels frequently. These are uh, most often pretty safe to eat. One year there was a red tide uh, uh, a dinoflagellate and algal um, infestation that put them in the uh, better not eat too many list or any at all for that matter. From Cordova, uh, we traveled uh, to Wrangell St. Elias National Park by bush plane. Uh, this particular uh, activity in and of itself is one of the supreme experiences in enjoying Alaska. There is no better way uh, to observe and appreciate the grandeur of the scenery than from the window of a bush plane. So what is a phenomenal moose habitat. And still an accumulation of snow uh, way beyond and way in excess of what normally would be. Uh, red algae migrate to the surface there, notice. We're traveling along the uh, course of the Copper River, uh, looking in many cases at the railway uh, evidence itself. The Million Dollar Bridge, uh, a major engineering uh, miracle to get the railroad from Cordova to the Kennecott Mine. Uh, where that most valuable and largest copper deposit ever discovered, the richest deposit ever found on earth. This wild land, unspoiled, undeveloped, much of it Chugach National Forest, accessible uh, <laughs> in the winter when everything is frozen uh, or in summer by uh, bush plain. Kuskalana River Bridge, uh, a, a significant gorge and a real challenge in engineering to get the railroad to Kennecott. Note the pepper spray uh, strapped to the strut of the, of the plane. Those are not 
you not carry those inside the plane. Copper River, uh, a major river, deep, fast, uh, that cliff area serves as a point where people net salmon with long 15-foot handle uh, salmon nets. The subsistence uh, residents are permitted to do this. Uh, landing in the gravel strip in uh, the town of uh, McCarthy, uh, where it is evident that small plane uh, travel is the, <laughs> the way to go in this, this territory. More people have pilot's licenses in Alaska uh, per capita than any other jurisdiction in the world. We flew uh, east uh, toward the terminus of the Chitna Glacier, uh, rugged countryside, uh, glacially carved canyons, and the Chitna Glacier outwash itself, which we will see from several perspectives, is an amazing assemblage of geologic activity. The very uh, rustic gravel strip uh, titled Hubert's Landing on a, really it's a gravel bar outwash plain from the glacier, drops us off for five, uh, five nights, six days of camping. Now watch this thing take off with no load in it and a good wind. At this point, Hiram insisted on carrying my pack. I was still hobbling with my walking stick. Uh, they took wonderful care of me as as I recovered and basically sat around being being adult. It was tough on me to to rest while the while the folks climbed the hills. The mineralogy here. Uh, is an education unto itself. The variety of, of geologic forms uh, is unequaled, unparalleled in any place in my experience. Time in camp. Uh, journalize, converse, enjoy meals, I love to make chairs, love to find a nice comfortable sphagnum mat upon which to plunk and, and read and write in my journal. I'm not sure whether Hiram was intent on fending off brown bears or pole vaulting streams, but he felt comfortable carrying that stick with him. And they're definitely moving. The hills are replete with doll sheep. Uh, the world record doll ram was taken very close to this particular place where we're camped for several days. An astounding uh, and highly unusual assemblage of, of features brings the glacial outwash, the raging melt of the rivers, uh, rolling boulders uh, and blowing wind, drifting sand together in what I choose to call a Chitna Desert. Uh, it, it seems anomalous to have such desert-like features uh, in the Arctic uh, zone, but it's difficult to look at this and think of, of anything other than desert. These huge boulders, of, uh, gorgeously beautiful, would be a landscaper's dream, but a little bit beyond the realm of possibility to <laughs> drag to the landscape supply yard. The Chitna uh, River it drains Mount St. Elias, Mount Logan, huge areas. Uh, is a raging, actually it's low now compared to what it has been in years past. The often haystacks 10 feet high, enough to flip a, an eight-person raft right up and over backwards if you don't catch the current right. 
Rafting is a very popular activity up in this region. The bush plains carry folk and all of their gear, uh, deposit the raft at the river head and, and uh, down they go. When the sun comes out, it's uh, long and often warm enough uh, to enjoy a little bit of sunbathing. Always uh, one must be aware of the presence of grizzly bears. Uh, this is their home uh, and it is we are beholden to recognize that and skirt them as need be. <laughs> My throne here uh, perfected uh, a good number of very pleasant hours uh, reading and writing on that particular throne. During the afternoon and evening, snow melt increases in the warm season and glacially fed streams we swell to the point where they become virtually impossible to cross with dry feet. You start out in the morning, no challenge. You come back in the afternoon, uh, you'd better be ready to, to ford the streams in, in any way you can safely. Lateral moraine from the glacier, a, a very loose sandy deposit, and a, a, a somewhat dubious from an ethical perspective uh, activity in glacier land called trunneling. Boulders are often perched right at the edge of these canyons, and whoop! Boys will be boys, I suppose. I don't think I want. <laughs> and kids will be kids. Uh, <laughs> there probably is a seriously therapeutic value to this activity. Your mud mask. Abby, look over here. Uh, Abby, Abby, tip your head back so you're. There, there's a video. Let me get a. a <laughs> we got to cross this particular creek uh, with dry feet on on the way up for the day's expedition, uh, but we're unable to cross toward our camp uh, later in the afternoon with dry feet. Bears. Uh, Not quite. Okay, we're ready. Must hang your food uh, out of reach. Uh, a, a, a fed bear becomes a bad bear and you don't want to associate them to associate humans with easy food. few moments collecting a variety of minerals, each featured for a split second here. There's copper, iron, uh, and likely many other minerals. It's the fascination of mineralogy. And certainly very richly uh, mineralized territory. Our ubiquitous tarp, uh, essential for comfort. Okay. Are you ready, Hiram? Turn in for the night and right. return Go. the bear bag to a, a height between pretty scraggly spruce trees, which oh, hopefully uh, bears won't be able to ascend. Departing uh, from Hubert's Landing, again I was uh, 
not permitted to carry my pack as I hobbled along with my walking stick. It is quite a comfort to have the bush plane come back and have everybody alive and well and uninjured. It is a risk to travel uh, in the, uh, the wilderness uh, to be 60, 70 miles from nowhere. It is critical that you be absolutely careful and accept the risk of, uh, that, that are indeed very real. Coming out of Hubert's Landing, we get a good view of the Chitna Glacier outwash plain, which sweeps back and forth uh, from canyon wall to canyon wall, tearing out any uh, unconsolidated drift and uh, glacial deposits as it goes, many of which have had uh, mature forests growing over them. This river moved back and forth and actually destroyed uh, uh, hundreds of acres of what had become excellent grassland for a herd of bison that are now struggling to find enough forage. Forests disappeared, washed out. Nature very much is in charge here. Uh, a small hunting lodge uh, near the town of uh, McCarthy uh, very nearly lost its, its front yard uh, and is still in danger of being washed out should the river take a wide sweep. The glacial formations in the McCarthy area are world class. I have not seen glacial topography as varied. Uh, virtually everything that you can imagine exists here. This is art in motion to see the glaciers carving, the moraines coming through. Mount St. Elias, uh, the third highest peak in North America, two guys actually climbed that on a pair of skis and tried to ski down. Uh, Mount Logan, uh, the second highest peak in, actually in Canada, right near the Yukon border. Uh, coming back into town, the glaciated uh, Kettle Hole Bog region puts us on the ground in the town of McCarthy. Uh, our pilot uh, offloaded us and unloaded a group of rafters uh, the raft disassembled. Apparently this is uh, certainly one's choice in how to conduct a recreational activity. These folks were very obviously fond of beer. Not a problem when you're floating in a raft. The town of McCarthy is uh, small in the winter time, it uh, balloons up occasionally. Uh, serves as a living museum. There is actually a a railroad museum, but there are artifacts and pieces of hardware, um, implements, and miles of railroad track, which are still too expensive to move out of here to scrap into uh, new iron. Uh, eventually, I'm sure that will happen. The railroad rails themselves, evidence of the former uh, history of the place. Trestles, uh, a significant proportion of the Copper River Railroad from the Cordova to the Kennecott Mine was on trestle and on bridge. The mine complex itself with the 13-story ore concentrating structure and the newly renovated town of Kennecott with uh, complete with the uh, very uh, upscale lodges. Uh, this is now a national historic site of uh, great significance. It's a wonderful visit. Um, happened to catch the uh, Fourth of July parade in the town of McCarthy, uh, which uh, swelled for the purpose. People came from miles around to see this incredible show. Give them the high sign which is typical of what we do at the museum. Our number one question. Boy, I
Anybody got an estimate on the number of people in town today? What are we, three, four, five hundred people we're looking at here? Pretty nice. Hey, and livestock. Every good parade needs livestock, huh? How about a big hand for the animals? There we go. These are not food animals. These are not for e eating. They are for gardening. There you go. Personal six by. <laughs> copper, uh, copper pipe organ company. Nice organ. All the way from Japan, we have motorcycles. All the way from Japan here today. Second here, then we have Alaska's Boreal, Boreal Canopy. Now we're at, now we're at a festival. Yeah, kick some balls around. There we go. Oh boy. Yeah. Now we're talking fun. That's a big bag of balls. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, kick it up. Ratchet that baby up a knot. No wonder it took so long to get the parade going. We had to fill that bag full of balls. There it is. About that, there's a lot of them. It's just like children. I'm joking about that part. Yeah. Uh, they are the ball providers. All right, Brokeback Mountain Air coming our way. And getting a massage as we speak. That's it. Massage at the pool hall. I'll tell you, if you break your back, that's who you want to have work on. It's happening. Without a doubt. It's like a... Somebody from the potato? Wow. Oh, look. It's french fries. The king with Burger King. Yeah, we want to be Spudniks. Hey, try those hula hoops on your hips. They're on your hips, those hula hoops. Yeah. Now we're talking. Love this one. Just wait till Monday morning meal, huh? Bring it up to everybody's attention what they did. Wrapped up, or we got a permit for this, or holy smokes! I'm going. Uh, I'm going with on the edge. Oh my gosh, Maui the dragon! Oh my gosh! A hundred percent. I'm in off the chart right now. I'm totally That's, let alone. Totally. Pay attention at all times. Oh yeah. Nice, there we have it. Dave Siren coming out with the crew. Oh yeah. There it is, hot tub, the Alaskan hot tub. Here we go with Glacier View Campground, rocking it at home. Sure. I'm not sure what's going on with this one, but they want to they want to serve you. Absolutely. Oh, I think I get it now. Yikes. Uh, there we go. You know, you know what I mean? How do you know? Hey, you know they're doing fireworks tonight too. Well, you left here because there's big fires elsewhere. I'm glad we're out of fire this year. That's always where you want it to go. But it goes for mowing the lawn. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now it's, now it's turning into a rough and tumble. Oh, pirates! It's the rough and tumble, I hate it. Uh oh, I think we're going for, yeah, baby. Bad, it's the good and the bad. Oh, I think good's winning out. No, I think that's losing at this point. Wow, that's more fun. I think a great time. Oh, look at that cutlass. Wilderness first response. Wow. <laughs> that's who you want on the scene first. And uh, if you know Sarah Davies, you know... A component in the town of McCarthy, which is greatly fascinating and enriching, is the Wrangell Mountain Center, uh, uh, artistic... Uh, agriculture, ecological, uh, wilderness, uh, travel training, um, a wonderful place to spend time. Jeremy Pataki, uh, uh, at one point the director of this facility in our, our own Petra, demonstrate what can be done even in the adverse uh, Arctic climate during the short growing season 
If you do it right, you can actually produce a significant quantity of your fresh greens. Uh, that particular day, a number of us participated in constructing nesting boxes for a, a species of swallow that was uh, having difficulty, but uh, this program has made a huge difference in the population of this particular swallow in the uh, McCarthy area. Later in the afternoon, <coughs> A, a dance contest took place and uh, Petra herself professes to love dancing almost as much as anything else. And the, uh, the dance off uh, proceeded. Uh, the more and more people were eliminated and the two finalists in this particular contest were Petra and the penguin. But <laughs> Of course, the penguin had to win. Uh, Petra did not take the, the dancing prize. I then I put myself up to my usual shenanigans. Was it famine or scurvy? I fought it. I threw my youth into a grave. The land where the mountains are nameless and the rivers run God knows where. There are lives that are erring and nameless and deaths that just hang by a hair. The great, big, broad land way up and under. The forest where silence has leased. The beauty that fills me with wonder. The stillness that fills me with peace. Our last day in uh, McCarthy found us in transit to Wiseman, uh, stopped at uh, a, a Fithian farm uh, on the road toward Fairbanks, uh, a yak farm. Uh, yaks uh, have been semi-domesticated and proved to be a very uh, efficient uh, and well-adapted animal for this particular climate. They're absolutely death on grizzly bears and wolves. The, the yak uh, is uh, aggressive when threatened by bears and wolves, and uh, they won't come near these, uh, these adult creatures. They serve as a source of, uh, of protein of superior quality. Driving north uh, uh, toward Wiseman, uh, pick up the Dalton Highway, and the various uh, vendors along the route, uh, civilization thins out seriously at this stage. Develop spring at the roadside to replenish water supply. Observe the Alaska Pipeline, that at its, in its day the single largest construction project on the planet. This four foot diameter pipe uh, goes 800 miles from Valdez to the north slope to Prudhoe Bay, often suspended over rivers, uh, often buried under. Uh, really quite a significant and impressive engineering undertaking. The town of Wiseman uh, and the Bushwhack Alaska Camp. Uh, Eric Salatan, a graduate of uh, FLCC, had us come up uh, in 2011, a year prior, and built these four guest cabins for his guiding outfitting business. Uh, I was fortunate to be there for uh, two months during the period of construction and thoroughly enjoyed the process. The particular, this summer in 2012, um, we came back from a, a backpacking uh, expedition, uh, level ground for me, some climbing for the rest of the guys. Um, we had a pile of logs and a, on a 
pad of gravel. Uh, we'll show you that in a second. Uh, the Hammond Creek gates to the Arctic National Park. Uh, gorgeous, wild countryside. Uh, clear, clean waters. Uh, phenomenal mountain scenery. The sense of camaraderie and friendship uh, that develops in an expedition like this can and almost always is wonderfully positive. Uh, I mean, my role uh, as, as a participant here was quite a bit different than it has been as a, as a professor uh, with the clout of the academic expectation. Uh, I uh, found myself not in charge uh, and uh, really had to act along with these folks as a peer. Uh, the fact is I'd like to be in charge and it was difficult for me to step back and and let the uh, the group rule. <laughs> Again our TARP uh, managed to keep us relatively comfortable. <laughs> Good quality camping uh, equipment is, is essential. Uh, the light, uh, weather tight backpacking tents uh, have become perfected these days and work really well. Uh, what do you do out in the wilderness? Well, some folks enjoy playing cards, and Hiram and, and Kyler uh, often took opportunity to, to shuffle a deck. Simply sitting about the campfire, sipping tea and coffee, uh, serves as a wonderfully relaxing, meditative, enriching activity. What, what is it that you're holding in your hand, Petra? I tell you, I don't really know. It looks more like wood than rock, but I tell you, it's in my hand. And it's hard for me to believe that this thing in my hand was heated to such an extraordinary temperature that it turned into taffy and twisted under such intense pressure, but I think... Is that a black bear? One of our criteria for a campsite was to have good visibility so that we could observe bears coming and, and take a, a, the most appropriate action available to us. We did not have any close encounters with bears on this expedition or for that matter in any other expedition previous uh, uh, the 14 uh, month-long expeditions I conducted through the, the college. That is not to say though that there isn't the risk of encounters with bears. Uh, there is a whole string of behaviors and um, that you must become aware of in order to minimize the probability of encounters. I have a particular fondness for coffee and never did have an empty pot when the time was appropriate. The pilot crackers and big blocks of cheese uh, served us quite well. Um, it is important to uh, match your caloric intake with your energy expenditure. We did, uh, actually Kyler had a connection with a an outfitter provider who managed to get us a 60% discount on our backpacking food. Uh, we ate very well uh, on this expedition.
the adventurers uh, seek the high land. Back now to uh, the Bushwhack Alaska facility, a particularly beautiful outfit. There's the 12 by 12, uh, 8 by 8 by 12 foot uh, shed that we put together in 14 hours. It was on the basis of this that Eric Salatan uh, provided an offer, again, which I will explain in a minute. Uh, visiting Jack Rekoff in his home in Wiseman, uh, a uh, unofficial mayor, postmaster, uh, naturalist, guide, uh, historian, and phenomenal gardener. Uh, he has conquered the challenge of growing a huge supply of vegetables during season, uh, getting a jump uh, with uh, hot houses, hoop houses. Um, he traps in the winter. Uh, it's rare for a trapper to succeed in catching one wolf. He manages to uh, get a good number of them. The town of Wiseman was a mining uh, uh, concentration, uh, f about 50 log cabins, most of which are in a state of disrepair today, but some have been restored and are occupied. Uh, folks come in by bus, and uh, Jack is able to provide a wonderful interpretive program. Uh, There are some new dwellings uh, and a year-round population of, of 15 in the town of Wiseman, one of two towns between Fairbanks and Prudhoe Bay, the town of Dead Horse. Uh, Petra took a real shine to the, the vegetable opera. Mark Rekoff was astoundingly generous to us. We were feasting upon fresh green vegetables for our entire stay. Time came to depart uh, down the Dalton Highway in our uh, rented vehicle. Uh, the service facility for the Alaska Pipeline, a major construction effort unto itself in addition to the pipeline. Uh, this particular road is gravel most of the way and requires con constant maintenance. Large, especially designed trucks for gravel road maintenance, much larger than you'd see in the, in the New York highways in some places paved. We reached Fairbanks, uh, boarded the Alaska Railroad, uh, in this particular uh, string of cars were des designated for tourist usage. Uh, these are uh, exceedingly well designed, wonderfully comfortable um, and spacious. The views uh, from the train itself offer a very comfortable and close connection to the world. Much of the agricultural land in Alaska, uh, with the long day length and particularly well adapted crops, produces an amazing amount. Uh, there is coal in Alaska, huge quantities in fact. Some is uh, combusted locally for electrical power production. Most is exported. Uh, the railroad route uh, along uh, major riverways uh, again gives access to very spectacular scenery. Uh, the winding road uh, allows one to see the beauty of the Alaska train itself. One of the activities uh, very popular in, in Alaska uh, where uh, areas are accessible by highway is rafting. Um, a, it can be very exciting, very demanding. Uh, depending on water levels and gradient, uh, it's a real challenge to, to pilot a raft down through the twists and turns and rapids of the Alaskan rivers. The railroad uh, uh, siding at Denali National Park, uh, our second to last stop, uh, the tourist nature of this particular railroad becomes evident. There are the uh, double price uh, upscale facilities and the, uh, the public train itself, uh, which is certainly comfortable enough, but half the price of the elite accommodations and the tour cars. Denali National Park camping. Um, uh, we uh, continued to enjoy 
our, the company one with the other. Uh, we'd become uh, quite close and quite compatible at this point, and life was uh, most enjoyable under these circumstances. Plenty to do, uh, lots of shenanigans. The day uh, we rode the bus all the way to Wonder Lake, a 70-mile expedition through some of the wildest, most open and beautiful country that there is available. Interpretive naturalist programs of outstanding quality, uh, displays um, and uh, roadside uh, views often of intriguing wildlife. The ptarmigan hen with her chicks, uh, a neat sighting, oblivious to the presence of the bus. Uh, the Denali National Park uh, with the Alaska Range creates its own weather, and very often uh, it is not possible to see the Great One herself, Denali, the 20,000-foot highest peak in North America. We kept uh, coming upon windows through the clouds thinking perhaps we'd see them, in some cases gazing at marvelous herds of doll sheep. Uh, the geology of Denali National Park is fascinating. Three tectonic plates collide. Uh, we thought this might be a view of our Denali Mountain Peak, but it was just one of the lesser 10, 12,000 foot peaks of the Alaska Range. Again, another false hope, but certainly absolutely inspiring mountains. Wildlife uh, in Denali is uh, often very visible because of the open country. Uh, and uh, moose, uh, we saw a number, uh, eating machines, uh, grazing heavily, 100 pounds of willow a day. For most folks, encounters with the Alaskan grizzly bear, if only through the window of a tour bus, provide a significant level of excitement. With this visual treat so symbolic of wild Alaska came the end of our 2012 adventure of five. Independent and autonomous, one of the five elected to remain to enter the Denali wilderness to tent camp alone. Four boarded the train to Anchorage with subsequent airline connections to New York. The rest of the Alaska story does not end here. Kyla returned the following summer to share the grandeur with his family. Marty returned for three months the following summer to continue with chainsaw construction of the Bush Wask Alaska building. The process of shingle production found me immersed in the spruce forest to the meditative hum of the steel MS-660. Fresh white spruce bolts mill efficiently into shingles, which I find quite attractive in application and know to be uh, durable when installed as vertical siding. I dedicated a few hours on most days to ripping shingle shapes from spruce bolts. Leave the shingles attached to the base of each bolt allows them to dry with minimal warpage. Uh, simply cutting the cookie at the base of the shingle bolt free produces shingles ready to apply. I find particular pleasure in witnessing the accumulation of shingle products, producing siding for the upper story of the original camp structure and the 16 by 36 kitchen during uh, uh, which we in fabrication of railings and furniture required only part of my summer. The following, the 14-hour marathon constructing the 8 by 8 by 12 foot shed during our stay at Bushwhack Alaska Camp that summer, Eric Salatan, the owner, invited me to build myself a retirement getaway. He would provide the materials. I accepted and added this project to my 2013 schedule. My design plan settled on a two-story 12 by 20 foot structure with a second floor writing desk complete with wraparound picture windows. Unfinished by the time I departed in July, I shall return for the month of June in 2014 to complete the project. My love for Alaska and all that it means remains embedded in my soul. Sharing my love for the natural world, and particularly places wild, has, for all of my years of teaching, served as one of my very richest rewards. The change in my own role from designated leader with command authority as a professor representing Finger Lakes Community College to that of simply being a member of a group of autonomous individuals caused me to recognize my habit and desire to control others. 
the chill out, Marty, we can take care of ourselves statement that came on the first day of our expedition cut into my very being. In the end, easing away from the stresses and responsibilities of leadership came as quite a revelation. When folks chose to do a number of things I could not have permitted in my role as a teacher, I did indeed chill out and hoped for the best. The news of the first human fatality from grizzly bear mauling in Denali National Park coincident and within five miles of the tent site of our solo camper came in after the fact. I would not want to be who I was had the bear decided she was an unacceptable threat. All things considered, I wish to express my respect and love for my four wonderful companions. They took excellent care of me in my semi-invalid state, and to a person mirrored the love for things wild I am so desirous to share.